According to some, it's about protecting civilians. We must not tolerate this regime using military force against its own people. Others say it's about oil. The only reason they're interested in, with Libya is about the oil. You think we'd be in Iraq if the major export there was broccoli? But some are convinced intervention in Libya is all about currency, specifically Gaddafi's plan to introduce the gold dinar, a single African currency made from gold, a true sharing of the wealth. It's one of these things that you have to plan almost in secret, because as soon as you say you're going to change over from the dollar to the something else, you're going to be targeted. There were two conferences on this, one in 96 uh, and another one in the year 2000, called the World Mataba Conference, organized by Gaddafi. And uh, everybody was interested. I think most countries in Africa were keen. Gaddafi didn't give up. In the months leading up to the military intervention, he called on African and Muslim nations to join together to create this new currency that would rival the dollar and euro. They would sell oil and other resources around the world only for gold dinars. It's an idea that would shift the economic balance of the world. Countries' wealth would depend on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they trade. And Libya has 144 tons of gold. The UK has double that, but 10 times the population. I do have one question. During the crisis or any time that you're aware of, uh, has the Federal Reserve or Treasury participated in any gold swaps arrangements? Uh, we don't, the Federal Reserve does not own any gold at all. We have not owned gold since 1934. Um, uh, we don't, the Federal Reserve does not own any gold at all. We have not owned gold since 1934. The Federal Reserve does not own any gold at all. If Gaddafi uh, had an intent to try to uh, reprice his oil or whatever else the, uh, the country was uh, selling in the global markets and accept something else as a currency or maybe launch a gold in our currency, any move such as that would certainly not be welcomed by the power elite today who are responsible for controlling the world's central banks. So yes, that would certainly be something that would cause his immediate dismissal and the need for other reasons to, uh, to be brought forth for removing him from power. It's happened before. In 2000, Saddam Hussein announced Iraqi oil would be traded in euros, not dollars. Sanctions and an invasion followed. Some say because the Americans were desperate to prevent OPEC from transferring oil trading in all its member countries to the euro. The UK's gold is kept here in a secure vault somewhere in the depths of the Bank of England. As in most developed countries, there's not enough to go around. But that's not the case in places like Libya and many of the Gulf states. A gold dinar would have given oil-rich African and Middle Eastern countries the power to turn around to their energy-hungry customers and say, sorry, the price has gone up and we want gold. Some say the US and its NATO allies literally couldn't afford to let that happen. Laura Emmett, RT, London. The world would be like with him in power. The idea is to try to help change the Middle East. Now, look, I did, part of the reason we went into Iraq uh, was... Uh, the main reason we went into Iraq at the time was we thought he had weapons of mass destruction. It turns out he didn't, but he had the capacity to make weapons of mass destruction. But I also talked about the human suffering in Iraq, and I also talked the need to advance a freedom agenda. And so my question, my answer to your question is, is that imagine a world in which Saddam Hussein was there, stirring up even more trouble in a part of the world that uh, had so much resentment and so much hatred. The three, the, the people came and killed 3,000 of our citizens. You know, I, I've heard that this theory about, you know, everything was just fine until we arrived. And, you know, kind of, the, the, we're going to stir up the hornet's nest theory. It just, it just doesn't hold water as far as I'm concerned. The terrorists attacked us and killed 3,000 of our citizens before we started the freedom agenda in the Middle East. They were, what did Iraq have to do with what? Nothing, except for it's part of, and nobody's ever suggested this administration. Gaddafi's rule is over. He still has the opportunity to reduce further bloodshed by explicitly relinquishing power to the people of Libya and calling for those forces that continue to fight to lay down their arms for the sake of Libya.
while rebels search Tripoli for Gaddafi, some forces loyal to the Assad Hassan leader, fiercely continued the fight. Obama said the United States would be prepared to offer Libya support to provide humanitarian aid to the wounded. I've directed my team to be in close contact with NATO as well as the United Nations to determine other steps that we can take to deal with the humanitarian impact. We're working to ensure that critical supplies reach those in need, particularly those who've been wounded. The U.S. president said his country will continue to be involved in the multinational effort and support NATO's mission in the ouster of Gaddafi. We're working to ensure that critical supplies reach those in need. Write on this paper what I have taken from you. What have you lost? Write it! Write it! An illusion, tabby bourgeois. And what do you control? For sure. Huh? The volume in your stereo, the air conditioning in your car. What else? What else? Bourgeois. <laughs> you think you were free? Well, we run at two o'clock today into the gym, right? In the morning, your wake-up call. In the middle of the night, when you wake up sweating with your heart pounding. What is it that has you all tied up as you are? Tied up in little knots. Is it ambition? Yeah. You're no mystery to me, boy. I used to be you. Congratulations. You're a student after all. And you've lost nothing but your illusions and a little bit of skin. I want to finish this. Finish what? Today, the government of Libya announced when I was a young man growing up in New York City, I refused the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Of course, I was sent to the principal's office, and he asked me, why don't you want to Pledge of Allegiance? Everybody does. I said, everybody once believed the earth was black, but that doesn't make it so. I explained that America owed everything it has to other cultures and other nations. And then I would rather pledge allegiance to the earth and everyone on it. Needless to say, it wasn't long before I left school entirely. And I set up a lab in my bedroom. There I began to learn about science and nature. I realized then that the universe is governed by laws and that the human being, along with society itself, was not exempt from these laws. Then came the crash of 1929, which began what we now call the Great Depression. I found it difficult to understand why millions were out of work, homeless, starving, while all the factories were sitting there. The resources were unchanged. It was then that I realized that the rules of the economic game were inherently invalid. Shortly after came World War II, where various nations took turns systematically destroying each other. I later calculated that all the destruction and wasted resources spent on that war could have easily provided for every human need on the planet. Since that time, I have watched humanity set the stage for its own extinction. I have watched as the precious finite resources are perpetually wasted and destroyed in the name of profit and free markets. I have watched the social values of society be reduced into a base artificiality of materialism and mindless consumption. And I have watched as the monetary powers control the political structure of supposedly free societies. I'm 94 years old now, and I'm afraid my disposition 
is the same as it was 75 years ago. This shit's got to go. We wait until they get sleepy. Wait until they get so big they can barely move. Then we walk out of the shadows. Quietly walk out of the dark. And strike. Eight minutes before the hour now, and as Russia amps, amps up the tension, we're learning the United States military has pledged to boost its aid to an air base in neighboring Poland. You can see where that base is on this map and where it is in relation to Ukraine. Russia, of course, highlighted in green here. We've also learned officials have confirmed that six U.S. fighter jets and two tanker planes for refueling have arrived just, off, just north of Poland in Lithuania, highlighted here in red. Meantime, the Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs confirms to Fox News that the Russian Navy has sunk one of its own ships in the waters off Crimea in an effort to create an obstacle for the Ukrainian Navy. Jennifer Griffin's live at the Pentagon with more military deployments. Jennifer? Shepard, Russia continued its efforts to consolidate its hold over Crimea today. We now have footage of the Russian Navy taking this dramatic action, sinking one of its own anti-submarine vessels at the entrance of a strait used by Ukrainian naval vessels, trapping those Ukrainian ships in port and preventing them access to Danislav Lake, uh, to the ba Black Sea, where they could actually defend Crimea. It's the la latest act of aggression by Russia after refraining from any action in the past week since the crisis began. The Pentagon, as you mentioned, sent six F-15 fighter jets to Lithuania to help patrol an air defense zone over the Baltics along Russia's border, a largely symbolic move. The U.S. is not sending its stealth, state-of-the-art aircraft, calibrating its response to Russia while trying to reassure NATO's Eastern European allies. The Pentagon still won't confirm that a dozen U.S. F-16 fighter jets and 300 U.S. troops are being sent to Poland even though the Polish defense ministry said they were. The USS Truxton left Suda Bay, Greece, en route to the Black Sea as part of what the U.S. Navy says is a routine rotation. It will cross into the Black Sea on March 7th. The USS Taylor, the U.S. Navy frigate sent to the Black Sea in response to terrorist warnings at the Sochi Olympics, is still being repaired in a Turkish port after running aground. Meanwhile, for a second day on Capitol Hill, Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel and General Martin Dempsey, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, took questions about deep defense budget cuts announced this week, something Putin is likely to be watching closely, Chef.